Hey folks, we got another video here to show some technical aspects of how to set the camber on your strut suspension car. It's a, you're able to set it four different ways in three different places, and we're gonna show that here. So this is our 24 Dark Horse Mustang. It's a strut suspension car, real similar to the S550 chassis that preceded it. It's got about 5.2 degrees of camber right now. Um, we're probably gonna dial that back to about 4.2 degrees, but this is the setup we got after installing a new set of MCS coilovers. And with an aftermarket strut, we had a slotted hole, and we can show where we got that camber next. Okay, the first place you're going to think of Vorschlag and setting camber is going to be in the camber caster plate. And we have this one maxed out. We did some tricks to get the knob under the top of the tower. The class we're running, we can't cut this opening. But whenever we can, we like to, because that we don't have to play any games. We can get more camber that way. We maxed it out here, and then we also maxed it out at the strut to spindle interface. The other place you can get camber is at the lower control arm, which I'll show here. So if your class allows it, you can also get camber adjustment at the lower control arm, but a lot of classes only allow it at the top or the bottom or don't allow sphericals. So it, when the classes allow it, yes, we'll get camber here as well. And also this is a two piece double ball jointed lower control arm. So we can get caster here, here as well. So it gives us a lot of adjustability. And in this class we're running this car and we, it's not allowed to have adjustable arms. The other way to get camber is ride height. So it doesn't matter what the top setting is, the lower the car is, the more negative camber it gets. So that's your four places. Top, bottom, strut to spindle interface, and ride height. That's your four camber places. Let's explore the strut to spindle interface because that's the one that's the most confused um, of, of the four places. Okay, so this is an S550 Mustang, very similar. Uh, it's a McPherson strut, and it's got a spindle and strut that uh, bolt together at a clamp and if you have a slotted hole like we do on these MCS's you can adjust this in and out and get a lot of camber here but if you get camber here you lose inboard wheel room and we'll show that next okay one of the questions we get a lot when we're doing a coilover install is how do you set the spindle to strut uh, placement and there's a lot of slop in this upper hole on a lot of the MCS struts and on this particular Mustang, it's spline. So once you tighten it in, it's stuck there. So you got to determine, do you want it all the way out? Do you want it all the way in or somewhere in between? And we're going to show a couple of steps and pictures on how we set that. We want okay, we've got the rotor, wheel, and spacer back on. And this is our widest wheel, our 1911. So that's what we want to set and get it as close as we can to the strut. So Brad's yeah, and then we're going to kind of peek up in there. So as you can see, we've got a gap between the wheel and the strut and, and push it in, Brad. So he can push it in or pull it out. And that's changing, you know, this, this little uh, adjustment right there. And we'll get that till we get about two millimeters between the wheel and the strut, and then we'll lock it in. And once we tighten these bolts, it won't no longer move, of course, because it's a spline bolt. But that way we maximize our inboard wheel room and get the most possible camber at the strut without impacting wheel space. So Brad has cambered in the spindle and then the camber plates all the way cambered in. And you can see the top of this 1911 is tucked way under the fender. So this is probably four degrees or more, but we're gonna show next how he shimmed it. Brad made this shim, it's three millimeters thick. It's kind of the goal we go for, for the distance between the tire and the strut. And so we're gonna stick this in there and show you how he uh, measured it. So what we're trying to do is the tire needs to be as close to this, you know, strut and below the lower perch as possible. So Brad put this shim in there and shoved the wheel in and he got, you know, this slotted hole, he locked down to where that shim and the tire were touching against the strut. So that's our clearance, our three millimeters of clearance. Uh, and that gets us the most camber possible at the strut to spindle junction. Not all cars can do this, but all the Mustangs can in the last 30 years. And uh, again, we can do the fine tuning of the camber at the camber plate. Thanks for watching our short video on the four places to adjust camber on the front of a McPherson strut car. We hope this cleared up any confusion. Thanks for watching.